is fully 3D printed using a soft actuate, soft actuate along with PLA connectors. And to control the hand itself, we have a foot pedal that we designed that will let air in and out of the system. A little bit of our uh, As Henry mentioned, we utilize soft actuators for this project. We used a Inflex TPU as the material. We decided on this material because we wanted to utilize its expansive properties when it's put under pressure. Um, the ribs and the height ribs as well as the spacing of the ribs between each actuator is different because each actuator has to meet a certain radial reflection for each knuckle of the finger. This is also one of our biggest problems because we have permeability issues throughout most of the actuators. So moving off of what Kane was just talking about, like you said, these actuators work off of expansion. If you look at that image on the bottom middle of the screen, you can see that's one of our very first variations that we 3D printed. And you can see how the bottom of those actuators, as well as the tops and sides of the ribs, are kind of bulging a lot. And we didn't want that. We only wanted expansion off of those flat faces that were facing each other on the actuators. So in order to combat this issue, we just added a hard PLA uh, ring to go over top of these actuators, and then thus control the expansion direction. And they actually worked pretty well, as you can see in that bottom right picture. That's one of our later prototypes that we were working with, and we had expansion only off of those flat faces, whereas in the previous ones, we were having expansion all around the entire actuator. And moving from that, these are just the hand mount and the connectors that we did. You're going to see in a couple later slides from now how all of these connect together. But the connectors are solely just air transport from one actuator to the next, and the hand mount solely is a uh, housing for the tubing and the first actuator across the mountain. You can kind of see that in the prototype that Henry was showing you guys before. As Henry mentioned before, we utilized the foot pedal for deploying our project. Um, we derived it from an old bike pump and for its part and utilized it for our project. Pushing one pedal down allows air into our system, while pushing the other pedal down allows air to escape our system. So this is the full system design.
material. Um, tubing that we utilize is a quarter inch tubing for the entire system, as well as the air valves, as Joey mentioned before, the check valves, the emergency valves, as well as the three way valves running through the foot assembly. And we utilize a compressor running at around 55 to 60 psi to run our system. So, for testing results, the first major test that we ran was the deflection test, and this was to see how far the actuators actually bend. And through previous research, along with our own testing, we found that the minimum allowable deflection per actuator was about 32 degrees, while the maximum deflection we were able to get from an actuator is around 102 degrees, 103 degrees, sorry. And this is mainly dependent on the uh, four main fingers of our hands, because as you can see from these pictures in the actual hand itself, the thumb is built differently to, because uh, thumbs in have an uh, extra degree of freedom compared to other fingers on your hand. So with this, we can talk a little bit more about the force resistance testing that we did. So this was a test that we did to determine approximately how much mass we believe the system would be able to hold uh, before we really went into actually grabbing objects and different items like that. From this, we found that since the actuators are permeable and don't hold a consistent pressure within them, uh, that these results would be true if the system were airtight. So that's just something to keep in mind. We ran these tests at a consistent airflow, so that's why we believe these are the results that would be consistent with an airtight uh, device. The, we treated each actuator as if they were some sort of spring, we used a formula similar to Hope's Law, where we hung a mass, we isolated each actuator and we hung mass off of them after they were at their fully flexed point. And as we, as they deflected, we measured the angular deflection and multiplied that by the bending radius and got a linear uh, deflection from that. And we're able to determine an approximate k-value from that to help us figure out about how much mass we thought the hay would be able to hold. From that, if the system were airtight, it would be able to hold a little less than five pounds. But as of right now, which Joey's going to talk about a little bit on the next slide, it holds around one pound. So this was another test that we performed. Uh, we uh, just wanted to approach this and try and be able to carry uh, different various objects to prove what we can handle with the system itself. Originally, we wanted to go with something like a five pound dumbbell and other uniquely shaped objects. But due to the air loss that we were having in the system, we had to kind of downscale that to do more lightweight objects. Um, these are objects that we kind of found around the 3D printing lab, but could also be found commonly around the house. So it kind of worked out. Uh, we went with objects such as a box cutter on the right hand picture and a adjustable wrench on the left hand picture, which is around one, one pound, and then also a small wrench in the picture. But as you can see, the objects were able to be successfully grasped with the mannequin hand and handled as if it were just a normal person's hand. So, with this, we just have a video of the object test that we did. So, we wanted to show the hand actually having air introduced into the system and holding it while being rotated in different positions that somebody may actually rotate their wrist while holding an object. And we deemed this pretty successful because it didn't slip out of the grip of the hand as it was holding it because we were originally having some issues that when the hand was turned up, upright like this, that objects were falling out. And this is a full system operation of our uh, project, running at around 55 to 60 PSI. As mentioned before, pushing down one pedal allows air into our system. But as we also mentioned, the permeability, permeability issue that we were having within the project. We needed to constantly engage our inlet pedal in order to keep the shape for our hand. We weren't able to hold pressure. So once letting go of that inlet pedal, most of the air was released in our system, so we couldn't properly show you how to release pedal to the foot. Uh, Budget-wise, <coughs> as you see in this first uh, chart, we spent about $110 of our budget from the school, and this is mainly on things like the uh, valves, uh, the mannequin hand itself, and tubing, things like that. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see that if this was a more of a real, real world uh, fit, uh, budget, it would be about around $100, $235, as we were lucky enough to have access to the 3D printing lab, and we did not have to pay for the filament or anything like that. So for the timeline of our project, this is the uh, spring semester timeline that we had to follow. We did pretty good on meeting our, most of our deadlines for prototyping as well as testing data. So these are some ethical considerations that we have. First is the XD code of ethics. These are just some general guidelines that we follow throughout the development of our project, which also leads into the five ethical code of ethics. These are a little bit more specific and intrusive when it comes to developing devices. 
sealant will slowly tear apart and allowing more air to escape from our system. We also had an adhesion issue uh, from the actuators to the PLA connectors. At first we were using epoxy to try to join the plastic together, but as we were using it, we noticed that some of our fingers would get clogged, and that's because the epoxy would slowly seep through and cure within the system itself. So we switched over to soup glue, and that has worked pretty well for us so far. We also had an issue with the management hand uh, while doing our mass carrying test. Because the management hand is such an unnatural shape compared to what our hand design wants to try to keep the natural shape of the hand, we had to switch over to a less consistent hand, which just blood stuck with paper towels. And we had an issue with our original compressor. We weren't having enough air flow into our system, so we had to utilize the compressor that was connected to the walls of this dark building. So moving on, what Kane just talked about with the obstacles we face, these are just some suggestions that we can make in order to improve upon the project. So, like you said multiple times throughout the presentation, air permeability through the actuators was the biggest issue that we faced. So, changing into a different material, such as a free printable elastic resin, would most likely combat this issue to the point of increasing usability of the device. Uh, we would still stick with 3D printing, just because we did try and go the route of molding with the actuators with a PMS material, but due to their really unique shape, it proved to not actually improve the design of the actuators uh, at all, so we decided to stick with the 3D printed uh, material with the Ninjaflex PPU. But using something such as an elastic resin, uh, they've been using multiple biomedical applications before, uh, so that would likely be more successful for this specific project. The only reason that we didn't use this material is because we have a $500 budget, and the cartridges for the material uh, to put into the 3D printer are very expensive and likely would have ended up exceeding the budget that we had available to us. In addition to this, we talked about before how our project utilizes a foot pedal. Originally, we wanted to have something a little bit more portable, but we since had to move into something more stationary, something you would use while you're sitting at a table or standing at a countertop, say. Um, some future considerations that we would make is something to make more affordable, such as using uh, an airsoft trigger system made in front of the canisters that they use at around 500 to 900 psi, which is more than enough air pressure that the system would need. The main uh, obstacle with that would be trying to figure out how to step that air pressure down. Using something that interfaces biomedically with the user or physically with the user. Originally, we wanted to use something such as stretch sensors, but we moved away from that again just with some other issues that we ran into with the project and went with a more stationary uh, idea. And just an integration of different grip patterns. I'm sure, as all of you know, you don't just grasp things into a fist every day. You use different types of grip patterns and motions. So implementing something with different grip patterns would definitely be another thing to bump this project up a level. And some of our references and acknowledgments. These are some of the links that we use to for our background research as well as current research into our projects. And these are acknowledgments, Dr. Bednarz, Dr. Vu, Mitch Adams, Dr. Zhu, Heather Bednarz, and Dr. Mattis. Any questions?
it's not it's, it's, it's not a painting that you mean or painting. No. It's, it's the material itself, right? Well, it's actually the process of making the actual. The three D filament process is not always perfect, and when creating those layers, you'll get those gaps. And as we use our uh, project, those gaps start to get a little bit bigger, and we tried to fix that by using the sealant, and it didn't really work. That's why we think that using a resin printer would be a lot better, just to be able to maintain the pressure within our system. But that is just mainly the source of the air leakage, just the actuator. Because it seems that that's your strongest, I, that's the part I like most, but at the same time, that's the part I don't like the most. <laughs> well, you're <laughs> <hard> to <laughs> <get> to <see laughs> that.